See you, man. Have a good show. Thanks, John. Cool. Thanks so much, uh, John. Technical difficulty there, man, but we'll uh, iron those out. Oh yeah. Welcome, welcome back. Howdy to Catherine in the window. Welcome back to the second show of Kyle's Variety Hour, half hour. Well, lack of a better name. Welcome back to our second week. I'm here with Brock, my brother. How about Kyle's got a smile? Kyle's got a smile. I've been, I've been taking all kinds of suggestions. I heard pulling teeth was one. Anyway, I'd like to start the show off with Brock and New. Um, jingle that I just wrote in the shower right before I came here. Would you like to learn it and try it with me? Yeah. All right, it's got three parts, so we'll start with the first. All right, and it does that two times. One, two, three, four. You do the whistling part. All right, I'll do the whistling. And then the second part, the second part goes... Hey, it's Bubba. <laughs> the second part goes, suck it to me. All right. Ready? So I'll start from the top. <laughs> suck, suck it, it to me. me. And then the third part, <laughs> the third part goes like this. <laughs> oh, oh. Right, you want to try it with right. me? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Oh. <laughs> All right, from the top. All three parts. Ready? All right, go. All right. So, welcome to Kyle's Variety Half Hour. I'm here with my guest tonight, Brock. And hit the theme song, please. <laughs> Suck it to me. <laughs> Thank you. Why am I employing this? <laughs> <laughs> that's our. I'm impressed. That's our pianist. I'm impressed. That's our pianist for the show, sir. What's your name? Uh, Piano Paul. Piano Paul. Piano Paul is is uh, is in the zone tonight. In the background. Here. He's yeah yeah. I got you mic'd up. Don't worry. Well, that's cool, man. I was way in the back, and it was cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are broadcasting from River West Film and Video in beautiful River West. And, uh, Milwaukee. Absolutely. Milwaukee. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. That's right. That's place Wisconsin, be, USA. If you're not here, you're not happening. That's right. Yep. <laughs> if you're not here... You're not with it. <laughs> nope. It's almost like a tree falling in the woods and no one's around. Oh, I can if you're not here, you might as well not even exist. I can oh, speak. Well, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not going that far. Well, but you're if very ha- close. If, if, you're very close. If existence is happening, then... This is where it's happening. Then this is where it's happening. <laughs> and therefore, this is where you need to come if you would like to exist. <laughs> no, I can, I can speak from experience. I just came from Indianapolis, and it's like there's... There's no point in living. You're, you're, you're from Indianapolis? I, I just came here from there. Yeah? Yep. What was, and there was no point in... No, there's no point in living. <laughs> Get the hell out of my face. There was no point in, There was no point in... So you feel better that you moved to Milwaukee? Oh, I'm just visiting. What? I'm just visiting. Oh, well, then get the hell out of here. <laughs> no, I want a reason to you know exist. <laughs> I know that guy. I Rob, this, that's, I the guy that, that's the guy that built my guitar. Rabbi didn't build your guitar. No, the guy standing next to Rabbi, of course. Well, right. I might know him. Yeah? I know a guitar I built. No, I don't know him. I can tell right now, I don't know him. Piano Paul playing his keys. Sorry to bother the Come on, Piano Paul. Let's hear some I was tunes. in the background. No, let's hear them. Because, you know, I'm way over there. And... <laughs> right. We're yeah. way over here. <laughs> I've been around for a couple of years. Yeah? Do you have any st- you have any stories you'd like to tell us about him? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> no. I don't know him that well. I, I don't like telling stories about anyone. <laughs> Unless they're my stories. <laughs> right. Anyway, what's that? What, what, what's that stuff? 
I don't know. <laughs> it's our sponsor. It's tonight's sponsor. <laughs> tastes good, it's though. Tonight's sponsor. Let's take a taste of that tonight's sponsor. Oh, yeah. This is from the mountains. This show is brought to you by Piano Paul. It's from the mountains. It's clear. It's crystal. There you go. <laughs> Where's this guitar? So we made it through the theme song. Hey, Garrett, how you doing? Hey. All right. Where's your instrument? I don't. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So I'll tell. I'll tell you what's going on. Have a seat. We're uh, we're just gonna talk about some of the some of the good times that we had growing up. Some of the crazy stories that you're capable of telling. Um. I was I was just thinking about before you came here how we used to sit around at well, night with our, with our before you let me do my impression. Yeah, you do you do an impression. Who are you doing an impression of tonight? I'm doing an impression of Michael Dorn. Michael Dorn, who's that for those who don't he know? He is uh, Star Trek's Worf. Worf, the Cleon. Half the, half Klingon? Half Klingon. No, he was a Klingon he's full Klingon, but he was raised by humans. Oh, uh, so it's like proverbial wolf. Yeah. Family. Okay, so let me do that. Let's Get hear that Michael Dorn. Alright. Captain, we need to raise shields. Very good. <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> I especially like the the touch of adding the thorns in your head <laughs> before you did that. That was really cool. And shaving your shaving your head for a horseshoe haircut. Yeah. And then painting my face black. Right. <laughs> that was, that was, for those at home who can't see, that was hilarious. All right, you got any more impressions, Brock? No, that's it. Oh, I'm sure you got some more, don't you? I got more, but that was the only one on my mind. Okay. But do, do you remember when we were kids and we used to make radio programs when uh, when we'd have sleepovers? We would, uh... Whoops. <laughs> I was <laughs> I getting to a phone my call phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, we got a, we got a live caller on the air. Hello? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> good, good, Steph. <laughs> Steph, you're live on the air. I am live on the air. Is that Stephanie Krivenchuk? That's Stephanie Krivenchuk. Hi, Stephanie yep. Krivenchuk. <laughs> <laughs> are you on here? You're right now. <laughs> yep, Steph, I got Brock on the show right now. I forgot to turn my ringer off, but that's all right. Cause that... Oh, yeah. Brock on the show. That's perfect. <laughs> because I was confused. You would actually get Brock dead Wedding oh yeah, what should you get Brock Denton as a wedding present? That's a good discussion. Let's talk about that. What does Brock What does Brock like? Uh, well, you know, the things that have crossed my mind are big, huge, boxing gloves, um, you know, like the big embroidered his and her. Embroidered his and her? Uh, embroidered his and her sword sheaths, maybe. <laughs> no. <laughs> embroidered his and her, um... Bath, bath, really batless. That's it. <laughs> Which is a Klingon <laughs> weapon. Some yeah. All right, so That's why I was calling. you can't. You came to the right place. This is. This became uh, <laughs> a topic now on the show. Um, let's see. What does Brock like? What does Brock not like? I tell you what he doesn't like. He doesn't like. I don't like candy. He doesn't like candy. He doesn't like. I know that about him. He doesn't like plants. <laughs> I like plants. I just don't like dealing with them. <laughs> he doesn't like de- he doesn't like dealing with plants. <laughs> so maybe 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 plastic plants. If you have any nice plastic plants. Well, no, plants wasn't even close on my list of ideas. Yeah. No, we have a cat, and the cat would rip up a plastic plant. Plastic or not, plants are out. What else does Brock not like? Water, swimming. Yeah, I don't like swimming. <laughs> Unless. <laughs> hmm. I don't like guns. Yeah, Brock doesn't like guns. That's for sure. Well, okay. So I talked to the captain of the Superior Police Department, trying to honestly. This is genuinely trying to get a bulletproof vest for. Jay and I to give to him as a wedding gift. <laughs> I don't know what she said. But it wasn't picked up. Oh, that's too bad. Well, it's good to have connections. Yeah. Um. Hmm. 
you know, things that have gone through my mind was a hilarious I present would be a, like pet supply of nature porn. <laughs> if you wanted to get me the funniest present ever, you would get me a bag of live bees. A bag of live bees would be a hilarious <laughs> present. <laughs> I, I, I would have to be present for a little bit. But make it, a, it would have to be a good surprise, you yeah. know? Like maybe. You'd have to wrap it up. Wrap and you'd it up. Have to, I don't know. It'd be hard to do because you'd have to keep the bees alive. In a bag. Yeah, <laughs> it would be hard to do. How now I'm getting a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Brock, you have the same ringtone as me. I know. The stock ringtone, Hello? brothers. <laughs> hey, now Jesse White's on the phone. <laughs> oh, wow. What do you know? Jesse White's calling in, too. <laughs> Jesse White? Hey, you're on the... <laughs> Let me call you back. Let me call you back in a minute. All right, all right. I don't know. I... Is Jesse White coming to the wedding? Yes. Jesse is coming to the wedding. We'll have to. So we'll, is Jay. And so is Jay. So oh, maybe. By the way, maybe you should talk uh, to Jesse. I'm getting married. In yes. case you didn't know that. That's the future of. That's the future of Brock's plans. He's getting married. That's what we're talking about. Told <laughs> <laughs> you that earlier. <laughs> All right, sounds good, Steph. <laughs> All right, call me later. I will. I'm, I'm glad to hear your voice, and I can't wait to see you soon. Thanks for calling. Bye. <laughs> Whoops. That was Got weird. cut off on the, on the love you. That, that was nice, though. <laughs> so anyways. Yep, now uh, we're all grown up, and we're on the radio, Brock. <laughs> so, uh, How much has changed? Bro. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Hello. Yo, what's up? Hey, Adam. How's it going? You're, on, you're live on the radio. I know. I'm watching. <laughs> Sorry, Adam. You're cutting out. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Not, not much has changed since we were kids. No. It's about the same organization <laughs> level of uh, the boombox style of radio that we're used to. So this is what we did when we were kids. Yep. That was the point of what Kyle was saying. Right. Uh, ten minutes. What, el- what else did we do? We used to uh, we used to go to church a lot. Yeah, we not, did. Not that we were uh, not that we were people of faith or anything like that. I think it was just more that. I don't think we're anti-faith. No, we're, we're not anti-faith. Not no, we just we really actually we really like going to church growing up as kids because well not our church our friends church our friends churches because <laughs> it gave us the opportunity to well smoke cigarettes first of all that yeah. was pretty fun uh, well we did that at our church too of course uh, yeah we went up in the attic we went up yeah the first day they would send us they they, they gave us a lesson and tell us go away and go somewhere in the think, church and we'd always go up in the bell faith, tower and we'd go up in the up there and we'd have to ponder a scripture and then come back and talk about it and smoke cigarettes old golds old golds sometimes was, a joint. yeah yeah sometimes a joint <laughs> and, but we all and then come back in CCD and talk about we would it think about it we'd be like Jesus you know um we could have burnt the church down. <laughs> yeah, there's because so much insulation. There's so much ash in our cigarette. <laughs> and the, and the rafters. Layers and layers and of layers layers of insulation. You could have really burned those churches down. So, yeah, we would. Eventually, it came down to Jesus. <laughs> Jesus we could have burnt saves. the church. <laughs> Jesus saves our ass. Jesus saves the from, day. From... <laughs> Burning the churches down. And then we'd go down and talk about what well, we were. We was we were given a discussion, a certain phrase or something, and we'd always just end up picking a fight with all the jocks in the class. But then, no, our friend, uh, our friend Andy had a church that we went to, and he would. His church had uh, like sleepover nights, and he'd always invite us to that, and we would go there and just totally mess those up. Yeah. And take over. <laughs> like one game was like people in persecution like you'd have to hide in the church and the counselors or whatever they were would come and find you and if they got you with their flashlight then you'd have to go to jail but we would just like smack the flashlight out of the hands or <laughs> take the flashlight take the flashlight from them and yeah. turn it on them or, and then, or and then turn it, it into our own game open it up and take the take batteries, the batteries and out throw them. and then run to a different part of the church <laughs> cause I'm not persecuted we're, not, we're first of all yeah 
We're making a point here. We're not going to be persecuted. <laughs> yeah. And second of all, this isn't our church. So don't persecute us. There was one thing I remember. We had to do a skit. I don't know the point or what the It was point also was. based on scripture. You know, they'd take a scripture, uh, say, uh, Jesus on the road to Damascus or Jesus heals uh, a leper or, or the Good Samaritan or something like that. Yeah. But but they, they, we'd always turn it into a kung fu movie. Yeah, we would. Because all the other kids would, <laughs> all the other kids would have their skit, and they and would. Uh, like, oh, very good. Very yeah, good. They, they oh, would, let's you know, pray. Everyone would have a good lesson, and they pray, and it was, it was all. There was always a, mor- a moral ending to it that they really thought hard about the the scripture itself. But we would just read the scripture and come up with a script, script for a kung fu movie, <laughs> and yeah. they would always involved crackheads. And Jesus beating up crackheads, which was kind of funny because we lived in Superior, a Where very was, small town, yeah, very with a all lot of white people. <laughs> there's no it, crackheads. Well, I mean, there's, they're, 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 they like to do drugs up there. Okay, but but the yeah, idea they're... of a, the, the idea of a kid, uh, a 12 year old kid knowing what a, a crackhead was, was really impossible. It was <laughs> <laughs> it was just what we thought crackheads were. Uh, anyway. You want to act out one of these skits that we had, Brock? I can't remember, but... Uh, well, we'll, I can't we'll remember them either, but this it's kind of how they usually went anyway. We just kind of narrated our way through them and then, uh, and then acted them out. All right. Of course, in the kung fu style. So let me get this camera adjusted here. Yeah. All right. So... Well, it's all right. It's sideways anyway. So, Jesus is on the road to Damascus. You be Jesus, all right? Hey, there I am. <laughs> Jesus is on the road to Damascus. <laughs> he's, he's riding a horse. He's, that's what he's doing. He's riding a horse. <laughs> on the road to Damascus. <laughs> And Jesus sees something <laughs> something strange from a cactus up around the corner. Hey, what's that? And he takes out his whip. <laughs> he takes out his whip and he whips the cactus in half. The cactus splits and he noticed behind it. Whoa! <laughs> there's some shady dudes doing some crack cocaine. You guys better stop doing that. There we go. And the crackheads say, Who are you, man? Try this crack. It's awesome, dude. It's really cool. Try this crack. No way, I'm Jesus Christ. That's the lesson. <laughs> Don't do crack. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. It usually lasted about... It usually lasts about 15, 20 minutes yeah. of straight <laughs> fake fighting. Uh, not to mention uh, the kung fu style uh, oration <laughs> of uh, Japanese talk over. Yep. Yep. Someone would usually be speaking and we would just be mouthing it. Right. We would usually go, I think, because we didn't have an ending. We would just try and keep going. And until. if somebody and if somebody died, then they would rise from the dead, and they would be zombies. <laughs> We'd just keep going and going until they but then, finally had to stop us. Do each you remember time. that one kung fu movie that you made for my video productions class? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, all right. I can't remember the name of it, the title of it. Me neither. But I remember we were sitting in my friend in Jesse's, Jesse's basement because they had a they had a bar <laughs> yeah, with a. With like a... A scenic... No, the scenic view the was scenic on the view, other side. Yeah, the scenic view was on the other side. So we started in the bar. And, <laughs> and Tony was like... He's spinning one of those the, those magnet, like... Uh, those, it's like those little swinging magnet things. And he's annoying you, yeah. right? And you reach over and you stop it. Then he starts swinging it again. And then uh, you reach over and stop it all dramatically. Qua, qua. And, and then he, finally you reach over and stop it. And he grabs your arm. And then you... And then we fight. Then you start fighting. (laughs) And he ends up killing you. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, with the blotta. With the blotta. With with what we came up with. What is the blotta? Was the blotta. 
I think what it originally was, was Jesse's stepdad was very, very large. And we'd say that when he just sat in his chair, he'd go, Blood of Like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but his chair his was chair, also as lo- <laughs> the his largest chair, chair I've ever seen in my yeah, life. It was gigantic. It was <laughs> bigger than, like, I don't know. It, like, uh, you couldn't get out of it. It was. You've seen those obese people, and they would look small in the, in this chair. It was a huge chair. You could. It was a couch. It, it was a couch. Right. It was a couch <laughs> for one fat guy. So anyway. Je- Tony kills you with the blada. Yeah, he we're, jumps well, on you. Well, the blada eventually became our thing for like some. Tony grabbed a pillow, and it became our word for. Something. I'm going to kill you with my fatness. Yeah, that's yes, what exactly. The blada came, became a verb for. <laughs> I'm going to kill you with my fatness. Yes, that's so what the blada became. He, he, <laughs> he, and I he, think the line was this: the blada. <laughs> And you went, no, de Blada! <laughs> and then he, he jumped on me. Yeah, then he jumped on you and you died. Yeah. And then... And then Jesse jumps down the stairs. Jumps down the entire it, length of the stairs. And we had... Lands on his feet. There was that scenic view of, like, an outdoor... I don't know, park? Or yeah. something? It was, like, mountains. Or, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, it had a mountain thing, but... Yeah. He just walks up and he's like, you killed my brother! Like, this had nothing to do... There was no mention of this character before. <laughs> he just, All of a sudden, he, he just, just jumped down. After well, unscripted, I died, just, after he died. He killed my brother. I think, anyway, that was, uh, that was my video production project. I think I totally got I failed on that, that course. <laughs> I really... I did really bad. I was always um, smoking weed in the dark room with Tony in high school. That was, <laughs> that was fun. Anyway, Tony... Well, that's why you take that class. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tony, so we mentioned Tony and Jesse and you and also Aaron. We were, we were uh, always in bands together growing up in high yeah, school. Yeah, we too. started out as the Cool Losers. The Cool Losers, and we, we played... We played one show. We played one <laughs> show to, at the Lake, Lake Nabagaman... Uh, what was it? The Lake Nabagaman Auditorium. Yeah. And... We, well, we like got a, a, we got the show wasn't supposed to go on until it was like, like eight ten, o'clock at night. Ten band show, and they're just like, yeah, you can play at like two in the afternoon. Yeah, two, so we got there. We <laughs> no got, one's there. No one's there. We got there at like ten in the morning and went to the gas station and made. We we took one sheet of paper from the the copy machine that was in the gas station, made a flyer, and then used the used the copy machine to make some flyers that we stuck around town yeah, that we, no the, one the saw. The flyer said. The insults are, or not the insults, that's the next man. The cool losers are here to put USA back on the map. <laughs> that's right, I remember that. <laughs> and it was stick figures of us all. Yeah. And uh, and anyway, we kept on getting fucked with by the LNPD yeah, that day. The Lake Nabagna Police actually Department. They kept on. a song about that. Yeah, we did. Well, the cool losers, there was, uh, there was our hit song called. Kyle's not a punk. Kyle's not a punk. That was our first original song. Kyle's not a punk. And then there was Ky- was there Kyle is a punk? I don't know. I don't think so. No. Oh. Kyle's not a punk because I was always I always wanted to sing, and you guys were the punks and wanted to shout. <laughs> but that you were Kyle Vetter. That earned me a nickname. That's right, Kyle Vetter. Right. Kyle liked. <laughs> well, me and Kyle grew up listening to Eddie Vetter. <laughs> yeah, but then you reach a point where you want to separate from that, and you can't. Yeah. You <laughs> too, too, too deep. Yeah. So, so after after the cool losers kicked me out of the band for being too <laughs> Kyle Vetter singy like, you guys went on without me informed. What you get? What was the name of your band? The, the insults. The insults. How do you spell that? I n s a l t s. <laughs> and then you put a circle around the A. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> An anarchy sign. Yep. Actually, that only happened because Jesse, our singer, our new singer, couldn't spell. And he thought that's actually how you spell, how you spell insults. insults. So but I thought it would be clever to just make it into an anarchy sign. We decided, like, whatever, we'll just... We're punks. <laughs> and it just stuck. Whatever, we're punks. And it's stuck. Put an anarchy symbol. 
<laughs> so yeah. Yep. We did that. Excited to see those guys this weekend. Yeah. Boy, it's been a long time. So, tell me about some of the insult songs. What, what were some of the titles? Um. Uh. Well, some of them were based on uh, stories I wrote. Oh yeah. On. Just, oh, the characters around town, right? Yes. All right. There so, is, okay, all right. There, well, I would this write is, stories about people. There's this one guy, yeah, in in particular. I always, I always was kind of envious of your imagination when it came to storytelling. But where where I or where any normal person walking around Superior, downtown or not downtown, but where 53 Highway 53 and 35 meet, that there was this man that would that would just run around. He had curly hair he, like he an always, afro he, he had curly hair and he was always running he always he was wearing a suit always always though. wearing a suit and he's always had a briefcase and he it became such a thing to just see this guy running everywhere everywhere he went and there was a time there was another time that we went to there was all, cathedral uh was, to, to do, do some classes there before we got kicked out of the the that catholic ccd for smoking and the, <laughs> and the marlene lady said i smell smoke and you said a car just drove by <laughs> <laughs> no but he was assistant teacher there too and so anyway you came up with a story for this guy yes what's his name i i named him I named him Ron John Piccolo. Ron John Piccolo. And I made up a story about him. What's his story? That, well, also, he was always seen around town with different ladies. He always had different ladies with him. Yeah. So, anyways, I, I made up a story that he was... He did. He always had different... Like, there was always women. two or three women with him at all times. Either yeah. running with him or just wherever he was. He was but always... he always had a suit. It never made any sense. Anyways, I made up a story. I wrote a story <laughs> down. <laughs> that he had a bomb in his briefcase. That's good. That's right. <laughs> that he was always had to run to a certain point in town. He was always told by like a uh, what's the Inspector Gadget's bad guy's name? Uh, Claw, Doctor Claw, or Dr. whatever. Doctor Claw, right? Okay, whatever. Doctor Claw was always calling him every day and saying, "You have to deliver the briefcase here." Or the bomb will go off. So every day he was running to a different place to put the bomb, or to put the briefcase. <laughs> so that it wouldn't blow up. So it wouldn't blow up. And so then he would every, save his wives. He would save all of his wives. <laughs> and then that became a song. And it was, how did that He's go? He's got 16 wives <laughs> and, and a Jerry curl. curl. He's Ron, 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 John Piccolo. Whoa. <laughs> That's right. I can't, yep. I can't believe I remember that. <laughs> that was Ron John Piccolo. He was, but eventually, when we grew up, when we started having cars, you know, driving around, we'd see him running. With we would go to the case. first. We'd go to the post office to check the PO box and get the uh, catalogs oh, yeah. of the porno. Oh, because Kate had a... <laughs> Kate, Kate, Kate would always get the, Kate had the catalogs of pornos and we all split a P.O. box so that we could have our zines <laughs> mailed to us and stuff without our parents ripping them up and uh, get seven get inches without yeah, our parents breaking them. And, and, uh, and then one of our friends that shared the P.O. box would always have the have porn catalogs sent there. So every day after, <laughs> after high school, we'd drive down to the P.O. box and get... Porn and, and records. Get porn records, and then at some point, at we, our way we home, did, we would see Ron John we, Piccolo. So we'd <laughs> circle the block, and then we'd, we'd sing the song, part of it to him. We'd be like, he's got 15 wives and a Jerry. And then we'd circle the yeah, block. we'd circle back Curl. Curl. He's Ron, Ron, Ron. <laughs> Ron, 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 Ron. It just keeps Ron, 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 John Piccolo. And then it got to the point where he started calling the cops. Calling the cops on <laughs> us. And the cops would pull us over like, what are you saying to this guy? We're singing, we're like, this, we're singing, we're singing the song, song that we wrote him. to him. <laughs> the song, song about how he's saving the how world. He's, how he's saving the world. And how he's got 16 wives. I don't know what he's pissed him. about. Yeah, what's his problem? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we wrote him an anthem. <laughs> we're just singing it to him every day. <laughs> what's the problem here? So, Brock, you like to... Climb off the up, climb up things. You're yep. a better climber than I am. I, I'm, I like to climb things and jump off things too. You like to jump off things. Yeah. What are some of your favorite places to climb and jump? Well, and and tell it me depends some on uh, where you live. But there was uh, when I lived in Green Bay, 
I, I would climb buildings. Yeah? Yeah. And then there was... Uh, what do you mean climb buildings? You find the fire escape, climb up a little pole to get to it, and then climb the fire escape. And then what would you do while you're on the top? Uh... <laughs> Fifth Amendment. What's that? Fifth Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple times that I, I was wasted and I threw some bricks off the top of it. There was a couple times when you would climb buildings in Green Bay with a vest, a leather vest on, and a sword, oh, and yeah. get to the top of the building and then <laughs> act out the video for Holy Diver by D Ronnie James Dio. Yeah. May would, he rest in peace. You would just you would just sing the whole song while swinging the sword around on the top of the building that yes, you just I climbed. I did do that. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would. Do what that. other places? All right, so we're in, we're still in Green Bay. What other places did you like to climb in Green Bay? Uh, it was pretty much the downtown places. I mean, I would climb up on top of my house and yeah, you know, my house, your house. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did scale your house nude. Yep, quite a few times. I remember. I was just, I was just reminded of that this this afternoon. As a matter of fact, on my way to work, I just, it was just pr right timing of the day. You know, no other time of the day that I would have saw you. I just <laughs> left my house seven in the morning to go to work, and there you were, halfway up already. I'm well, like, no, we were careful up there. Okay, that's. Brock. <laughs> there, was a, there was a different reason for that one. Okay. I don't know. For, okay, I got... Re the reason's not important. Uh, no, the reason is important because we... There is a super crazy lady that would ride the buses. And uh, she got off the bus right in front of our house one time, and Dustin invited her into my house. And we got really pissed because she wouldn't leave, so... Uh, in revenge... I climbed your house naked, went into his room, and wiped my butt with his pillow. <laughs> okay, that's right. I forgot about that. Uh, I think you caught me one time. Yeah, I did. And, and you, you were brushing your teeth, yeah. and you came out, and you said, What the hell are you doing? <laughs> and I said, Oh no, he sees us run! But I was completely naked. You were with Ralph that time. Yeah, I was. He was clothed. Yeah. He was just standing there. I think he walked up the stairs, too. I don't yeah. think he climbed. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know why I, I was naked that time. What about in Superior? Where are some good places? Um, I think of... Uh, there was that one hotel. I think of Amnicon Falls. What hotel? I, oh, the... the um, starts with an A. A. Android Hotel. Yeah. Climbing up to Android one. Hotel, which is the tallest building in Superior. Mm -hmm. Going up to the roof and just being... That was like... You know, kids huge. being kids, yeah. but, you know, you're just, you know, 15, 14, 13-year-old kids just want to see the top of the city and smoke a cigarette. Yep. <laughs> Share one cigarette between four dudes. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, climb the, let's climb this tallest building in Superior and do it. Yep. Those are good times. Yep. Because you couldn't get cigarettes. That's right. We would... Uh, who would buy cigarettes for us? Dustin, because he had he was the first guy that had facial hair. Aaron Hansen. Aaron Hansen too. Because there was that one gas station where that one guy didn't card. Yeah. Or Super One. I think that you was his. Steal him, I think that guy's name was Nick, and I think he ended up beating up Aaron when Aaron was naked once doing it with his ex-girlfriend. That really? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I remember that story. I didn't know that those were the same guys. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Let's see. So, then we used to live on uh, Highway 35. That's where I had some of my best memories growing up. Known as Tower Drive. Yep. We would... Oh, uh, it? Uh, it was one of the, the, the last houses on... Highway, on Highway 35, 2701, 27, 27, I don't know. 2731. 2731. Yeah. Good old, good old, <laughs> you know what I remember as this nice weather is approaching? Uh, cash. <laughs> Do you remember, <laughs> Do you remember cash? Do you yes, remember what yes. cash stands for? Yes. What? Kick. Kick-ass summer home. That's right. Kick-ass summer home. It was our garage. It was our garage. <laughs> that, that we that we found, I guess. It was our garage. It was full of shit. And we just 
We just we took found, a bunch of moldy we, carpet. We, we took all the shit out, and we found carpet in dumpsters in alleys, <laughs> and we put it on the floor, and we're like, hey... Yeah, it's we, our bachelor yeah, pad. It's our bachelor <laughs> pad. We're going to bring some chicks back here and make out with them. Yep. We and did. <laughs> we totally did. <laughs> <laughs> until until, uh, until mom, mom caught, caught wind of the operation and busted us, yep. right? Yep. What did oh, she... we had that little... It was like a... It was a, a furnace? Furnace, but we would hide beers. We would <laughs> we'd have old beers that were found in there. Yep. Like really old like, sun sunbathed. Uh, Milwaukee's best, best. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, what what else happened on Tower? Uh, I'm I'm trying to think of the the time that you made a uh, a barricade. <laughs> oh yeah, we got arrested um, for that. One. <laughs> on thirty five. Yeah. Oh, I got arrested for that. Oh, one. You, I spent yeah, the night in jail. That. I was the one that was passed out of the basement. So, <laughs> me and my friend Aaron used to have this thing. I don't this messed up thing where we would get drunk and then everyone else was passed out and we were still drinking so we'd be like uh we go out for a smoke and be like all right let's just put a bunch of shit in the road <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of stuff would you grab we would find like couches and lawn furniture know, lawn furniture dumpsters or La- lawn not ornaments dumpsters. yeah Put gnomes, them, gnomes, uh, everything, <laughs> just, anything you can find in someone's yard. The kick was it. watching a car pull up to it <laughs> and then watch. Stop! Watching, you look watch at the watch guy. the driver scratch their head. Like, what the hell? And then have to turn around. Of course, I didn't this all hear happened about at like on the news. four in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and then turn around. <laughs> <laughs> turn around. I guess go I'll the go. other way. You ain't coming down this way. <laughs> but the one time we did it outside of our house. I mean, we used to do it. We used to do it all around the town. Yeah, not in front of our house. <laughs> not in front of our house, no. <laughs> just all just, just causing but, reckless. Yeah, reckless. the time we did it in front of our house, um, we also, Aaron and I, decided we we're gonna create mischief, and uh, we decided we we're gonna smash a car window, which we weren't capable of. <laughs> but someone saw us attempting it, and we ran away, and we're like, we're so smart, we're going to run around and then into the house. <laughs> <laughs> so the cops showed up, and Kyle was passed out. I was passed out. That was the first time I had gotten really drunk. I, we were drinking... We were drinking we were vodka. Drinking, no, we were drinking Bacardi Silver and oh, yeah, Root Beer right. Schnapps. And I remember drinking Root Beer Schnapps with my closing, like pinning my nose like this because I thought it tasted so awful. It was the worst thing I had ever tried. And I got so drunk and the cops wanted to talk to me in bed. No, they... I was, they I was actually sleeping in a laundry to, they, basket. They were talking to us. You were, and then you started swearing and you're like, I gotta go to work. I gotta go to work. <laughs> That's right. And you went and got in the shower. I got in the shower with my like, clothes like, on. And like, no, they what are you... You can't asked, be in this... Get out. <laughs> what they, are you doing? Then they, then they kept asking me to say the alphabet backwards or something. I was like, I'm trying to sleep here. I got really belligerent and that's when they decided to do arrest me. It wasn't my fault. I wasn't the one making the barricades. <laughs> So, uh, we're running low on time, but I wanted to say um, a couple more things. I wanted to bring up the fact that you and I used to have backyard wrestling matches, too. <laughs> what was your name? I had a couple names. Yeah. But I think I went by Big Tex. Big Tex, that's right. Big Tex. Big Tex was... What was your, what was your outfit? It was like... Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. They had a vest. A vest with fringes. <laughs> yeah, with fringes coming off. Lunatic the fringe. <laughs> and a hat. Uh, and you were definitely not big no. at all. <laughs> well, you're from Texas. You were born there. And I was the Storm and Mormon. And I had a Book of Mormon and a tie, black tie and a white shirt. I think you hit me on the head with the Book of I, Mormon I would, Yeah, <laughs> I would hit you on the head and I would open it up and rub your face in it and say, <laughs> Read it! Convert! Read it! And, uh... And then there was one match where it was I was facing you and Dustin's character, whose name was Buster B. Video, the disgruntled blockbuster employee. Well, no, the, the match was I was supposed to fight him, but you jumped in. But I jumped in, and there was a surprise waiting for me that I didn't know about, 
But maybe you did you know about it? No. The light tubes. There was oh. he he had a bat, and on his on this wiffle ball bat, it was a plastic wiffle ball bat, and on it he I didn't had know about he that. had taped six light tubes, light bulb fluorescent tubes, and as I was engaged in some sort of fiasco with you. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. turn around, and I didn't realize this. I turn around, and Dustin had pulled it out from underneath the staircase and whapped it over my back, busting all six light tubes over my back. I just and remember getting that match. I just remember getting, because that match, I was supposed to be beaten up. That was the story. Right. Line. You were supposed to get power bombed through an electric, or through an yeah, air organ, I, just I think, or something like that. I remember getting my ass kicked for, like, 15 minutes. And <laughs> like, it really sucked. And I had to <laughs> slice my eye. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was blood. Yeah. With razor and then the cops yep. showed up. Yeah, and then the cops showed up. That's right. Yeah, of course. Cops show up at the end of all of our stupid <laughs> stories. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like it was kind of kind of like. No, that. It, it was at least WrestleMania at ten. <laughs> you gotta go with the X. <laughs> DX. Yeah. All right. Before I leave, Brock, I want to talk about the show that's about to happen that we're about to go to over at uh, Quarters. Roman Gabriel Todd, the Beast Rising Up Out of the Sea, and a band from uh, Milwaukee called Holy Shit, who's playing right now. I think Pussy Collector's playing there. Pussy Collector, of course. There's uh, some really great bands playing. You should go there as soon as you get done hearing this last segment. There's a song I want to read called, uh, a Holy Shit song. I'm going to read the lyrics from the, from the record called I Shot Brock. You familiar with this one, Brock? Oh, I... I, I didn't. I wasn't aware of this. Well, there's a song out there <laughs> called "I Shot Brock." It's been true. It's true. You've been shot. Is that right? Yes. It's, it's true. They haven't uh, caught the guy who shot you. Is that nope? Well, yeah. maybe I, I can is. offer you some insight. Kyle, did you say Mad Planet or Quarters? Quarters. You said Mad Planet. Did I say Mad Planet? Kyle's a liar. I'm lying. All right. Anyway, "I Shot Brock" by Holy Shit. Lyrics by Tad. I'm gonna hit and run. Go home and get my gun. I hear some noise pollution, and I've got a 15-cent solution. Gonna hide where they can't find me. Gonna make a badger salami. Hey. <laughs> gonna have a catfish fry. Bullets are gonna fly. He said, fuck me. Well, mine's bigger. And the next one pulls the trigger. It was Friday. I was bored. And I think he had a sword. Gonna hide where they can't find me. Gonna make badger salami. Gonna have a catfish fry. Bullets are going to fly. Let's break that down, Brock. All right. I shot Brock. Brock, that's you. Hmm. No, I'll agree with that. Okay. <laughs> now, the line, it was Friday, I was bored, and I think he had a sword. Now, how does that apply to you? Well, I <laughs> have had... A sword in the past. I <laughs> even made a holiday of it. <laughs> yeah, what was it called? <laughs> sword Day. <laughs> sword Day. Sword Day is was the worst day, sword day to be worst. a brother. It is the worst day <laughs> in sword the day world is the worst to be a brother. Day to be when your brother when your day. brother is celebrating Sword Day. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to be around someone. You don't celebrating. want to be around someone <laughs> celebrating Sword Day, and you don't you really. You don't want anyone that you love or care about to be celebrating Sword Day, for that matter. That's it's, a, <laughs> it's, it's a, pretty much like a celebration of anger. <laughs> yeah, you're way, and waving around a sword. A way of releasing all your anger towards the world. You also had um, you had a a handy knife gadget too. Is that right? Knife on a knife on a oh, rope. Oh, I had a knife on a rope. I yeah. invented that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Patent, pending. patent pending. But what? Tell, can you describe it real quick, please? Yeah. Please. Uh, it's a knife. Yeah. On a rope. <laughs> so what you, happens? You tie the the rope on uh, onto your hands, <laughs> and then you can throw the knife across the room, across, across the, the living room. room, probably. <laughs> yeah. Right. And when you're drunk, it doesn't really go where you want. Well, throwing knives. Unless you're a knife thrower, I would, I would say <laughs> you're not really good at it. Those, those who've known Brock, are very lucky indeed, <laughs> <laughs> because many, many of you have been unscathed. That's that's the reason why. Let's I'll, just say I've given some haircuts <laughs> unintentionally. Um, all right, next line, the refrain: "Gonna hide where they can't find me. Gonna make badger salami. Badger, 
What is that? Well, my name is Brock. Yeah. Obviously. You're, yep. Uh, it's another, or what it means is badger. Yeah. Right. And uh, you're so, wearing a you're wearing a red hoodie with white. Uh, yeah, I places am. so you kind of and you're I kind of look like you kind of look like a badger. You've never ceased to act, stop acting like a badger. I've also sure. uh, created an alter ego named Badger O'Malley because <laughs> I am. Sometimes I get like a, I'm a short guy. For those who don't know me, I'm a small guy, but sometimes I get very vicious. <laughs> <laughs> so Badger O'Malley is a is a nickname. What that that reminds me. Once you applied for a job, right, to be a badger. At the zoo, <laughs> you applied to be a you applied yep. to be a, a badger. Oh, we didn't get a chance to talk about the time that we broke into the zoo. In, oh yeah, in Duluth. Hold on, we'll get we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, gonna have a catfish fry. What's that? I, uh, well, states of my drunkenness. Sometimes I'm not always Badger O'Malley. I'm not always Brock. Sometimes I'm just. Catfish Carl, or I'm just bumming around. It's like the homeless guy in a... In a... With a shopping cart. Shopping cart. So you have some alter egos. Yeah. They're all dressed Catfish Carl, that's me. So now hopefully we have a a little bit more insight as to who shot you. Uh, Yeah, so, yeah, before we go, let's talk about that that time that we, uh, we broke into the zoo. Well, let me spoil... The listeners here. <laughs> it ended in the cop show. <laughs> <laughs> how many times? How many times have we? All right, I'm trying to think of how many times I've been arrested. It's probably ridiculous, but the amount of times that I have avoid being arrested. Now that is an amazing, <laughs> okay. amazing. <laughs> Screw statistic. the story about the zoo. Okay, we <laughs> the broke, zoo. Into, we the broke zoo. into the zoo. The zoo. Whatever. We tripped a tripwire. We got to see some zoo animals. It was it was dark. It All was right. awesome. Here's another story. <laughs> One time we were going to a place where you smoke pot, where it's known to smoke pot. We were smoking pot <laughs> in the car. <laughs> a cop was following us d- down a deserted road. I said, I said, hey, turn around, turn around, turn around. and, and we pull, do, pull up to him. We and pull do up a to U-turn. Him. We pull up to the cop. Roll down the window. <laughs> roll down the window. And say, hey, do you know how to get to... And then we said where we're going where to. Where we're going to. To smoke pot. Yeah, do you know how to get to Connor's Point? <laughs> yeah. And they said, yeah, it's over there. You know, it was just like, you know, we knew exactly where we were going. We were we were just and, a little freaked out that they were following yeah, us. That's so, all. <laughs> so we, we freaked out. We did a Yui, and we're like, hey, cop, tell us how to get here. <laughs> and they're like, well, that's really weird. They're probably not smoking pot. <laughs> yeah. And then we went there and smoked pot. <laughs> you, you've changed a lot, Brock, since, since, you've, uh, since these crazy stories. That's, of course, you don't do that stuff anymore. No, I don't smoke pot no. anymore. That's, you haven't for a long time. No. <laughs> so that was just like the most it was like uh lost uh las vegas movie fear and loathing in las vegas when <laughs> he turns on his signal and then the, the cop gets all weirded out <laughs> yep at the end he's like can i give you a kiss you weren't there when we stole those canoes and went under the uh, lift bridge, were you? No. Okay. Well, that ended with cops, too. I'm trying to think. At the time, Sam swam home. Yeah, that was the time. <laughs> from <laughs> Sam swam across the bay. And they, were, they had the helicopters out looking for him. Uh, well, thank you so much, River West, for tuning in. I think we're going to head over to the show right now. I'm really happy to have my brother here, Brock Denton, who's getting married on Saturday. If you're invited, you should come. <laughs> if you're not, then well, you get to be Aquaman. Yep, <laughs> you get to be Aquaman. <laughs> it's gonna be a great wedding. There's gonna be it's gonna be something galore for for the nerds out there. Anyway, thanks Brock for coming down. Thank you for having me. And thanks for everyone for listening to Kyle's variety show that doesn't have a, a name yet. It, we just got a jingle. We're gonna try and. Right, we're gonna try and remember it. You just do it. All right, I'll try and do it. You just keep you just keep up where we where we where you can. All right. Uh, remember, sock it to me. Sock it to me. Right? That's that's the most important what part. Is it? Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, ready? Sock it to me.
from River West, from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, from River West Film and Video. This is RiverWestRadio.com. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. We'll see you next week. You gotta put that on.